Good morning everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is totally transporting me to the beach which I think all of us need right now. Today we're going to be comparing and contrasting three very beachy coconutty fragrances. So this was a requested video. Maybe you've been on the fence about a couple of these fragrances or maybe you like to blind buy like me and you're just not sure which one to go with. So we're going to be talking about longevity, price point, what they actually smell like, what the most prominent notes are, and all of those other little details. And today's video is also in collaboration with Maisie Fragrances. If you guys haven't heard of her, she is a new fragrance reviewer on YouTube and she is amazing at describing fragrances. We also have very similar tastes, so I think you guys would really enjoy her. I will put the link to her video in the description box below, so definitely head on over there and check that out after you're done this one. And without further ado, let's get started. One of the questions that I received on my channel after I shared my terracotta perfume in a previous video was which one did I prefer? The Air and Hibiscus Palm or the Terracotta Le Parfum from Guerlain and that kind of gave me a fun idea and that was to compare and contrast the three most beachy scents in my collection. So in today's video I'm going to talk about what is the price point, what is the longevity and the sillage of these fragrances, what do they smell like, what are the main differences and if I have to pick a favorite one which one would that be. The whole vibes of today's video is seriously bringing me back to Mexico and Cuba. It is making me miss the beach so bad. I am so envious of people who can just literally leave their house and go down the road and they're at the ocean. So you guys never take that for granted. Um, if you are one of my viewers who lives right beside the ocean, comment down below and tell me. And also please go touch the sand for me. <laughs> so yeah, we've got lots of beachy vibes today. We have pearls, which of course are made in the ocean. They're not real pearls. We have a nice palm plant over here. And yeah, without too much further ado, let's get into these fragrances. So all three of these fragrances are um, similar. They kind of go along the same vein. Not that they smell the same, but they're all kind of along that same beachy um, vein. I will go through um, the main differences. And there's one in here that definitely sticks out to me as being quite different from the other two. And I'll see if you guys can figure out what that is as we go along. First, let's talk about the one that I've had in my collection for the least amount of time. This is the newest one. This is Terracotta Le Parfum from Guerlain. I love this bottle first of all I like that it has um, like that kind of bronzy Sun symbol in the middle this just screams vacation to me this opens with bergamot coconut and tiara flower in the middle you have orange blossom jasmine and ylang ylang and in the base you have white musk and vanilla but the most prominent notes in here is that tiara flower that jasmine and that coconut so this is primarily white floral coconut first and foremost, and then you also have a few other floral notes as well as a nice musky vanillic base. So this is a really beautiful, very posh, very elegant smelling beachy scent. It definitely does have that kind of sunscreeny beachy vibe, but I would say less so than the Bronze Goddess, for instance. This one is just a little bit more elegant, a little bit more sophisticated. This one is a touch more complex than the Bronze Goddess, and this one is also um, just very feminine and elegant smelling because of that tiara flower and that jasmine. So this also retails for $94 for 100 mil up here in Canada from the Hudson's Bay. That's where I purchased this one. So this is about $50 per 50 mils. And yeah, this to me is just, it's absolutely beautiful. It screams summer, um, very elegant, very sophisticated. This has pretty good longevity. I would say that I got moderate longevity with this, so about four to five really good hours before it became a skin scent. And I would say it has moderate sillage as well. Mm, this, is, um, this is just such a pretty, beachy white floral scent. It just, to me, it just screams summer and very sophisticated. Where would I wear this? I would wear this to a nice resort. I can see myself spritzing this on at like eight in the morning when the sun is just getting up and you're at a beautiful resort by the ocean and you're going for breakfast and you want to smell just posh and feminine and super, super vacation. Like to me, this is vacation in a bottle, summer in a bottle. Next, let's talk about Estee Lauder's Bronze Goddess. Um, so this is the second most recent purchase in my collection. Um, I love this bottle as well. This is an absolutely stunning bottle with a turquoise cap and then it's got, or sorry, um, a tortoiseshell cap and then it's got the turquoise band around the neck there. This is the least complex of all of these fragrances. This has the fewest amount of notes and it also is the most 
um, linear of all of the fragrances, meaning it doesn't change very much. Um, so this opens with coconut, it has a heart of tiara flower, and it has a base of sandalwood, amber, and vanilla. So this, like the terracotta, also has that tiara flower, but this one is lacking any other um, floral notes. So this doesn't have any lang lang, this doesn't have any hibiscus or anything else that would make it smell super floral, but this one really ups the sunscreeny, beachy vibe. To me, this one smells like, I don't know if you guys have ever smelt it, but to me, this one smells like the Victoria's Secret um, shimmering bronze cream if you I'm not sure if you guys know what I'm talking about I will put a picture on the screen for you and the notes that you get most in this fragrance is that coconut and the vanilla so where in the terracotta you mostly got coconut and flowers in this one you mostly get coconut and vanilla so this is a lot more creamy this also has sandalwood in it which gives it a very kind of a creamy woody uh, vibe which isn't in the terracotta. The terracotta more leans um, musky vanilla. This one leans creamy vanilla, so it's a little bit different. This one also has the, probably the lowest lasting power out of all of these fragrances. So this one to me definitely becomes a skin scent a little bit quicker than the other two. However, it does project okay, and I have no complaints with the performance on this one in general. Um, yeah, when I've worn this one, I have really, really enjoyed wearing it. It wasn't like I felt like I needed to apply more or that I felt that it was weak or anything like that. I really love this fragrance, you guys. This is just such a uncomplicated, um, creamy, gorgeous, coconutty, beachy scent. Again, to me, this isn't super sunscreen. To me, this is more like bronzing cream. So um, to me, when I smell this, I picture literally being on the beach. So in terms of like a vacation scent, this is the one that I would wear when I was literally at the beach, laying on a towel or on a nice lounging chair. I have these really gorgeous um, tortoiseshell sandals and I have a big floppy elegant beach hat. And of course I'm wearing lots of sunscreen because I don't want to expose my skin to those harmful UV rays, but I am just totally soaking up the ocean and the sights and the sounds and the smell smells and this to me is like my picture of the beach truly at the beach this isn't going for dinner this isn't um dressing up in a nice sundress and doing shopping or going sightseeing or anything like that this is like my true beachy right beside the ocean scent price point for the bronze goddess this retails for about 97 dollars for 50 mils so this at least where i live is twice as expensive as the terracotta and i'm not sure if that would be universal or not but i know that this one is more widely available in the united states whereas the terracotta apparently is a little bit harder to get your hands on so this one might actually be less expensive expensive where you live. So um, do check your prices on that. I'm not 100% sure, but for me, um, I have to pay twice as much for the same amount of perfume as I do with the terracotta. Now let's talk about Erin Hibiscus Palm. This is the one that I've had in my collection for the longest out of all of these fragrances. And if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that this is one of my absolute favorite coconut scents. Um, it is worth saying as well that this one I purchased um, in store after smelling it a couple of years ago, whereas the other two were blind purchases. But that's not to say that I wouldn't have bought them if I would have experienced them in the store. It's just that this one was one that I actually sought out and purchased knowing what it smelled like. So hibiscus palm opens with ginger, palm leaf, ylang ylang, hibiscus, and lotus. It has a heart of white florals. It also has frangipani. And then in the base, you have musk, vanilla, and coconut. But again, the most prominent notes in this fragrance is that palm leaf, that frangipani, and again, the coconut. So all three of these have very prominent coconut notes. The difference with the Erin Hibiscus Palm is that this one is quite a lot more complex. There's a lot more floral notes in here. There's also hibiscus. This also has palm leaf in it, which I'm not sure what palm leaf smells like on its own, but this has a very um, tropical, bright, kind of a green quality to it. This also does have a little bit of vanilla, but to me the vanilla is a super background player. What I mostly get in this fragrance, you guys, is a whole ton of tropical flowers and that coconut and that palm leaf. So this is the most elegant, this is the most sophisticated, this is the most 
um, feminine, bright. If any of these three fragrances were sexy, I would say that the Hibiscus Palm is the sexy one out of the three. Um, and to me, the vibe that I get from Erin Hibiscus Palm is high-end, luxury, tropical, beachy locale. I don't know whether it's a resort, like maybe I'm down in Florida, maybe I'm in California near the coast, the Cayman Islands. I'm just somewhere super luxurious near the ocean with a lot of palm trees. To me, this is um, the most elegant, the most elevated. I feel that this one projects at least on par with the terracotta, but maybe even a little bit better. And this one, again, is about five or six hours of solid wear before I feel like I need to spray it again. But this one definitely has better performance than the Bronze Goddess. The price point on the Erin is definitely representative of what you get because you do pay quite a lot more for the Erin Hibiscus Palm. This one retails for $150 approximately for a 50 mil. So this one is three times as expensive as the Terracotta and it is quite a lot more expensive than the Bronze Goddess as well. When you're looking at the bottle, um, you also have this beautiful coral gemstone, which makes it look very tropical as well, very ocean-esque. And um, the bottle, of course, is just very simple, um, very elegant. And I've told you guys before, this is one of the best beachy summer scents I've ever smelt in my life. So where would I wear this one? Like I said, I would wear it to someplace high-end, very luxurious, very tropical. To me, this is also vacation in a bottle, but this one is the one that I could wear for dinner. I could wear this one dressing up. I could wear this one walking around doing shopping, going into all the high-end stores, looking for maybe a new Chanel bag or something like that. So to me, again, this is the most elevated. I think you could also wear this other times of year it wouldn't have to be on vacation because it has less of that sunscreeny beachy vibe and more of that just just more of that feminine summertime kind of quality about it so let's kind of go over a couple of things just to summarize these three fragrances which one has the best performance that would be the Erin hibiscus palm followed by the terracotta la parfum from guerlain and then lastly we would have the bronze goddess um, from Estee Lauder in terms of performance. Price point, your most expensive one is your Air and Hibiscus Palm, and your most affordable one, at least where I live, is the Terracotta Le Parfum. But depending on where you live, it could be either of the Bronze Goddess or the Terracotta. They're actually quite affordable. In terms of sophistication, elegance, class, which one is the most sophisticated, elegant, or classy? I think you could argue that all of them are quite um, classy. None of them smell super young, none of them smell cheap or anything like that, but I definitely think that the Hibiscus Palm is your most classy, high-end, luxurious one, whereas your Bronze Goddess is definitely your more quintessential, I'm going to the beach and I'm going to oil myself up and wear a bathing suit and sit out in the sun. Um, so yeah, this one is more of the cow casual beachy one, I would say. Whereas Erin is the one that you're wearing a dress and high heels with out of these three. And the Terracotta Le Parfum, I think, is kind of like your casual sundress, um, but you could definitely dress this one up and you could also just wear this one going to the beach. So it's kind of like your middleman between the three. In terms of safe blind buys, personally, I would say that if you like coconuts and you like beachy scents, you could probably safely buy any of these and be very, very happy with them. Um, personally, like I said, these two were blind buys for me and they both turned out to be amazing. I love them both. And if you have similar taste to me, those might be fairly safe blind buys for you. I also think that the Erin is a fairly safe blind buy simply because it's one of the most beautiful scents I've ever smelled. It is quite popular and I just don't know how any could not like this. It's beautiful. So which one is my favorite? If I have to pick one, if I could only pick one of these fragrances, um, you guys know it would be the Erin Hibiscus Palm. This would be my first choice if I could only keep one of these fragrances, simply because this one is the most beautiful, it's the brightest, it's the crispest, it's the freshest. It is the most sophisticated, elegant, luxurious, high-end, expensive smelling, good quality, great performance. Yeah, this one would be the one I would pick out of the three. And the other two I would say are fairly close ties because I like them both. They're both amazing. It's just that the Bronze Goddess is more of like that super beachy coconutty scent where the Terracotta is a little bit more floral feminine daytime kind of fragrance. 
So you guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these three fragrances. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions or if there are any other fragrances you would like me to discuss. Also, don't forget to head on over and check out Maisie's channel. I think you guys will really enjoy her. And also head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already so that you can see outfits of the day, scents of the day, and other little tidbits of my life that you won't see here on YouTube. And I'll see you guys all next time. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,